In this video, we solve problem 4.2.26 from Essentials of Statistics, 6th edition by Mario Triola. The problem statement says, hospitals uh, typically require backup generators to provide electricity in the event of a power outage. Assume that emergency backup generators fail 29% of the times when they're needed. A hospital has two backup generators so that power is available if one of them fails during a power outage. Then we're asked to complete parts A and B below. Part A asks us to find the probability that both generators fail during a power outage. And then they ask, notice the fine print. They ask us to round to four decimal places as needed. In order to work this problem, I'm going to show you my paper. Okay, so we're here. Well, first we need to know what the probability is that one generator would fail. And we're told that that was 29%, but we need that in decimal form. So 29% in decimal form is uh, 0.29. I don't know why I put a pair in there. We just move that decimal over twice. Now the probability that both generators fail is equal to this. You're gonna take the probability that the first generator fails, and then you're gonna multiply it by the probability that the second generator fails. And that gives you the probability that both fail. So we'll take 0.29 and multiply by 0.29. And that gives us 0 0.0841. And they wanted that to four decimal places. So that's our answer. Let's enter that into my lab statistics. Okay. All right, great, it likes it. And then the second question says, find the probability of having a working generator in the event of a power outage. The question says, is that probability high enough for the hospital? Assume that the hospital needs both generators to fail less than 1% of the time when they're needed. Okay, so I'm gonna write this question down and then we'll answer this as well. In order to answer this question, I'm going to share my paper with you. And before we do that, notice that we're asked to round to four decimal places as needed again. Okay, so we're here. This first question says, find the probability of having a working generator in the event of a power outage. This is a little bit tricky. We want to have the probability of having a working generator. So there is actually there are actually two things that could happen here. We're going to have to look at the probability of having one working generator. And then the other one failing. And then we'll need to add the probability of having two working generators. Now they didn't say this in the problem statement, but it's implied. It says find the probability of having a working generator. So in other words, that is at least one working generator. That's what we want. The probability of at least one. Now if I'm looking at the probability of having at least one working generator, I have to compute the probability of having one working generator and then co um, compute the probability of having two working generators and then we'll add those together. Um, and that will be the total probability of having at least one working generator. Okay, well, the probability of having one working generator is this. We'll have the probability of the first one failing um, multiplied by the probability um, that the other one doesn't fail. So this one fails and this one doesn't. So if that is, if, if a generator has a probability of failing of 29%, um, the probability of succeeding or working is one minus that 0.29. So that's the probability that the first generator works and the second one doesn't. Um, we should also add um, the probability that the first generator works 
and then the second one doesn't. So that's a possibility. And then that both of these combined um, are the probability of having one working generator. So that's this first piece. And now we want to add the probability of having two working generators. Well, the probability of having two working generators is the probability that the first one works, which is one minus 0.29, times the probability that the second one works, which is one minus 0.29. And of course, one minus 0.29 is um, 0 0.29. 7, 1. So you can simplify that if you want to. And then let's see what we get. Let's add all of these guys together. So I've got, whoops, sorry about that bright spot, 0 0.29 times 0 0.71. And then I've got another one of 0.29 times 0.71. They're just in the reverse order. So there are actually two of those. So that's the probability of having one working generator. And then the probability of having two working generators is 0.71 times 0.71. Oops, I want to take the answer and add 0.71 times 0.71. And so I get this. So the probability of having at least one working generator is 0 0.9159. And I believe they said, or they believe they asked us, excuse me, to um, find that probability out to four decimal places. So let's see if my labs likes this answer. So we have 0 0.9159. Okay, great, they like it. And then the question says, is that probability high enough for the hospital? Select the correct answer below. Um, and if necessary, fill in the box to answer, um, or fill, fill in the answer box, excuse me, to complete your choice. Now it says, uh, first part A says no, because both generators fail about this much of the time that they are needed. Given the importance of the hospital's needs, the reliability should be improved or yes, because both generators fail about this much of the time that they're needed, which is low enough not to impact the health of patients, or yes, because it's impossible for both generators to fail. We know that it's not impossible for both generators to fail. Up here, we've got the probability that both generators fail during a power outage, and that was 0 0.0841. That's the probability that both generators fail. Now this part B says, find the probability of having a working generator in the event of a power outage. And we found it by looking at the probability of having one generator and then the probability of having two working generators. And to find one working generator, we had to multiply um, the probability that the first one failed times the probability that the second one didn't. And then we had to add the probability that the first one succeeded and worked and the second one failed. So we did that and then we added the probability of both of them failing, um, or excuse me, both of them succeeding and we got this number. Now notice also that the probability of having a working generator is the complement of the probability that both generators fail during a power, power outage. If both generators uh, fail, um, the probability is 0.0841 or 8.41%. So 8.41% uh, of the time, both generators fail. Now the rest of the time, which turns out to be 91.59% of the time, uh, both generators or um, at least one generator works. So I guess we didn't really need to do this, although it was a good exercise. Another way of finding the probability that we have a working generator is to look at the complement of the probability that both fail. So either they both fail or they don't. And if they don't both fail, then that means we have at least one working generator. So we could have just taken one and subtracted the answer to part A to get the answer to part B. Um, which I'm noticing in hindsight, but I guess I should have uh, realized that in the first place. So the probability of having a working generator is 
since that's the complement of having two failing generators, it's going to be one minus the probability of having uh, two failing generators. Or let's just say both generators fail. So actually, I would recommend that you use this instead if you recognize it. I didn't recognize it on the surface, so I did all this calculation instead. And you see, you get exactly the same answer. Okay. Now the question, now let's look at that last question again. It says, is the probability high enough for the hospital? Well, let's see. It says a hospital has two backup generators. Oh wait, here it is in part B, it tells us. It says, is the probability high enough for the hospital? Assume that the hospital needs both generators to fail less than 1% of the time that they're needed. Well, actually look at this. Uh, both uh, generators fail at 8.41% of the time that they're needed. Um, so we'll say, um, no, that's not high enough. We need the probability to be less than 1% and we have 8.41%. So that's gonna be a problem. No, both generators fail about 8.41% of the time that they're needed. Given the importance of the hospital's needs, the reliability should be improved. So you might say, okay, well, what do I do in that case? Maybe add another generator. Think about it, if we add, if we multiply this by 0.29 one more time, would that get us to be, would that get us to a probability that's less than 1%? Um, it might, you should check it out and see. You might multiply by 0.29 as many times as possible to see how many times, or as many times as necessary, excuse me, you might see how many times you have to multiply by 0.29 in order to get that number to be less than 0 0.01. Once you find that, that's the number of generators the hospital needs to have um, so that it meets this uh, criterion that both generators are failing or all of the generators that they have fail less than 1% of the time. Oh, I'm sorry, it said, it told me my answer was wrong. It says round to the nearest whole number is needed. I guess I should have rounded to 8%. There we go. Sorry about that. I'm sure that happens to you guys too. So now you know you're not alone. Your teachers make those mistakes too and we don't read the fine print. It's easy enough to do.